Good morning, I'm Heather Moss, one of the family ministry leaders here at Copperay Community Church in Lenexa, Kansas. Thank you for joining us today. This is the second day in our series titled Unusual. Today we're gonna to continue to talk about David and a special box that made him really, really happy. And it wasn't just any box, it was a super duper box. But before we get to that, let's get our dance on. Fallen when fear is calling, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on And it won't let go I feel it breaking out Like an echo Your love is holding on And it won't let go I feel it breaking out Like an echo Echo in my soul There's no stopping what you have started until it is complete. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up, cause you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. some unusual joy. So the other day I was getting coffee and the line was really long and I was starting to get a little bit frustrated because I had somewhere to be. And when, by the time it was my turn and I got up there, I realized that somebody had paid for my coffee for me. You know, that was pretty unusual, but it also brought a lot of joy to my heart. Aren't you glad that sometimes God gives us joyful moments even when things really aren't going our way? So I'm really, really excited to hear this week's Bible story. So let's check in with Carl and see what he has to say. Hey there, Chicken Nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Andy. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends. Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Pro TV. So, 
Carl. Yes, Andy? What are you doing? Nothing. I'm doing absolutely nothing. Yeah, I can see that. What's what's with the box? Box? Oh, no, what box? No, this box. <laughs> it's not, it's just a normal box, Andy. So can I hold it? No! <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to be really careful because this box is different than any other box. It's unusual to find some so rare. All right, no problem. So what's so unusual about it? Well, I care about this box, and I found something that I never thought I would. Well, you're not talking about the crazy egg, are you? <laughs> yeah, I got the crazy egg. Everybody knows that a box of eggs comes with 12 eggs in it, but every once in a while, you'll find one that has an extra egg. A 13th egg. A crazy egg. Crazy egg. Wow, Carl, that's amazing. You must be so happy. <laughs> yeah, so happy. I'm so happy. Carl, you seem kind of stressed. What? Me stressed? No, why would you say that? Well, you're doing your stressed out voice where your voice gets all high and loud. What are you talking about? I have a stressed out voice. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm a little stressed, but I've always wanted a crazy egg and now I have it, but... But what? Now I'm afraid of losing it or something bad happening to it. Oh, I guess that makes sense. So what do you say we jump into today's story? I suppose. What are we talking about? Well, believe it or not, we are talking about King David again, but this time it involves a special type of box. A box like this? Not exactly. This particular box was made of wood and it was beautifully designed. They actually called it the Ark of the Covenant and it was created to hold really important things in the Old Testament. What kind of things? Things that would remind the people of what God had done, like the tablets that the Ten Commandments were written on, or a jar of manna. Is that the special food that God rained down from the sky for the Israelites to eat? From when they were walking the wilderness and stuff? That's the one. And also the rod that Moses' brother Aaron used that budded leaves, even though it was a dead piece of wood. Wow, that stuff really is important. So what does that have to do with King David? Well, having the Ark of the Covenant in your town was something everyone wanted, especially David. Why did everyone want it? Well, what made the Ark of the Covenant really special is that it was a symbol of God's presence. Wait, God was in the box? Sort of, it was a place where people could come and meet with God. That's why having it with you was such a big deal. I can imagine. Well, who had the Ark? Well, David and his men came and got the Ark from a place called Bela and they brought it back to Israel. <laughs> nice. I bet they were nervous like me, huh? Holding on to the Ark, protecting it, trying to make sure nothing bad happened to it? Not really. I mean, the Ark of the Covenant is so important. You gotta take care of it. Yes, it is serious, but bringing home the Ark of the Covenant was a very happy thing for David and the people of Israel. Really? Of course, this box had so much history and meant so much to the people of Israel. I mean, it was one way of really knowing that God was with them. Wow, that was really cool. You bet it is. David was so happy that he began to dance and everyone started playing instruments. Wait a minute. David was dancing, right? Yeah. But it said he was dancing in his underwear. What, you've never done that? I'm in front of a bunch of people like that, Andy. <laughs> Fair enough. But at that moment, David didn't care what he was wearing or who was watching. He was just so happy and filled with joy. Joy? Of course, David finally brought back the Ark of the Covenant to God's people. That meant so much to David, and he could not contain it. I know how that goes. Sometimes I feel like I'm just gonna burst and I'm gonna get all my feelings out. But I don't think everyone gets me. You know what, David experienced that too. Some people thought that the highest ruler in all of the land should not be behaving in such an unusual way. But David let them know that his joy came from the Lord and he couldn't hide it. Well, good for David. Why should he? Well, after listening to this story, I think it's obvious that God gives unexplainable joy. Carl, you know what gives me joy? Silly cat videos on YouTube? No, you said our big idea. Today's big idea is God gives unexplainable joy. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, One two, two, three. three. God, God gives unexplainable, unexplainable joy. joy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I'm glad we got to talk, Andy. I'm now truly starting to enjoy this crazy egg. I'm glad too, Carl. You deserve it. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. I'm really. Oh. Carl, I'm so I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, Carl, don't, don't cry. God, God gives unexplainable. Okay, that's. Ah. Oh. That's that's all for today. That's all for today, kids. Sorry. Oh. Uh, not dead. Oh, Carl, look, it's an omelet with legs. <laughs> Oh, neat. Hey, girl. See you next week. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. 
So today we learned about David and his special box that made him really, really happy. Now this wasn't just some, any old box, it was a super duper special box, probably the most important box that the world has ever seen. And can you guess why? So let's what's, see what's inside of this box. So in my box, I have a ring that my grandmother gave me. Um, I don't even wear it very often because it's so, so special to me. Now that's what makes my box so special, but the reason this particular box was so special to David was because it was a holy box. It was surrounded by God's power. And this box was called the Ark of the Covenant. In the Ark of the Covenant, there were things that reminded the people of Israel how amazing God had been to them. Even though the Ark of the Covenant had a home, King David, he really liked to move it closer to him to keep it safe. So he sent 30,000 of his best men to go and get it and protect it and bring it back to him in Jerusalem. So let's read this verse in the Bible to see how their trip went. David and all the people of Israel were celebrating before the Lord, singing songs and playing all kinds of musical instruments, lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. Wow, that sounds like a party. Who's up for a dance party right now? Man, you all sure know how to party, and that's just what David did. David was not just happy, David was joyful. In fact, he, even though he had all of these challenges, David was so full of joy that when the ark finally arrived at the city, David danced in his underwear. I know that sounds kind of unusual and maybe a little bit embarrassing, but it didn't bother him. But when David's wife, Michal, saw him dancing from the window, she got really mad. She didn't like that the king would humiliate himself in that way. But David didn't care. He was so full of joy that he made offerings to God and he celebrated with the whole city. Burgers and fries for everyone. Okay, well maybe not burgers and fries, but you get the point. Knowing that God was so close filled David with joy. Well, hi, Miss how are you doing today? Hey, Sparky, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fine, doing fine, just about ready to go read my big stack of books here. That is a big stack of books. You know, it might be a little loud around here, so if you want to go somewhere quiet, it's okay if you head over to the church library. Well, it's just a little bit of light reading, no big deal, but, you know, <laughs> nah, I can hang out here. Someone might need to be a hero, you know? A hero? Does that mean you're the hero if someone needs one? Well. I can try to be the hero. Well, you know, actually really does. It's like super meaningful, you know. And sometimes like even when I can help people just trying to make me feel like I've been a gift from God. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot of gifts that God gives us. Anyone with biceps like these understands joy. <laughs> your biceps. You haven't gone to the gym a lot, right? That was one of your goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but... It was in that jar, our big idea last week. I had to help you open it, remember it? You did do it. I mean, you had enough muscles to get that open. Yeah. And, uh, the, what, what's the this week? You wrote on a piece of paper, didn't you? Yeah, I wrote it down so that way you won't struggle. Hang on, just a minute. Let me grab it. Okay, so all you have to do is read from this, and then that, that's our big idea. We get to tell our friends again about the big idea. You know how we love Carl and how he talks about the big idea, but we also like to talk about it too, right, Sparky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here you go. Here's your piece of paper. So it says, God gives a muffle of joy. I'm sorry, what? Uh, give a what? What? Jimmy, Jimmy, Woody, Woody. Are you making up your own language, Sparky? Zingle Wingle. God gives Zingle Wingle joy. <laughs> Zingle Wingle. Are Jingle sure Wingle? What it says. Jingle Wingle joy. I don't know about that one. I haven't heard that one. What about the big idea being God gives us unexplainable joy? What? That's totally what I said. <laughs> but I can help set it out for you. Yeah. Well, thank you for your help. We greatly appreciate it. Totally. Big time. <laughs> Gotta get to it. All right. Happy reading, Sparky. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Be sure to check out the KP website for additional discussion questions and activities that you can do with your family. Our, uh, be sure our YouTube channel and our Facebook and our Instagram pages are full of content for you to check out this week as well. As we finish up today, let's take a minute to go over that memory verse again from Isaiah 55 
verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now let's watch a quick video on how to do this in sign language. Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Great job, everyone. Remember, memorizing scripture is another way that we can worship and stay connected to God in our lives. It was great seeing you today, but before we go, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear God, we live in a world where we are always fighting to be happy. Thank you for reminding us that today, that true joy is not found in the things we have, but in the God we serve. Thank you for filling us with unexplainable joy. Help us to spread that joy to those around us and those who desperately need it. Amen. All right, guys, have a great week. I'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Be there.